numerous fueling stations exist throughout the state of Indiana. The fueling station's existence pose no inherent risk, regardless of whether they are located in commercial or government facilities. However, it is our habits that increase the potential for fuels such as gasoline, kerosene, and diesel to make it into storm drains. Storm drains are meant for rainwater only. Once in the storm drain, the water with all of the pollutants travel directly to our local streams and rivers and not to a sanitary sewer or wastewater treatment facility for removal. Once these pollutants reach our local streams and rivers, they degrade water quality, aquatic habitats, and can cause health problems for human populations. Spills and leaks that occur during vehicle and equipment fueling can contribute hydrocarbons, oil and grease, and heavy metals to stormwater runoff. You may never see these pollutants leave a fueling station, but rain or sprinkler runoff may carry it to the storm drain. Your community is regulated by EPA and Indiana Department of Environmental Management in order to prevent or minimize pollutants from entering our waterways. When pollutants such as fuel reach those waterways, it becomes a federal violation of the Clean Water Act, a violation of state law, and a violation of your community's local stormwater ordinance. A few simple precautions can be taken to prevent fuel from harming our waterways or our environment. If you refuel at a government or commercial facility, these two precautions apply. Do not leave the pumping area while filling the vehicle and do not top off the tank. Either of these activities may lead to fuel spills, which can then be tracked off the property by your tires or even by your footprints. Spilled fuel can be easily picked up by stormwater runoff and carried to a local water body. Use only dry materials to clean up spills or leaks. Using water such as a water hose or pressure washer to clean up fuel spills or leaks only creates a bigger problem, sending more polluted water directly into waterways that will not be treated. If you refuel at a government facility, then properly use the items in a spill kit for small spills or leaks near the pump. Leaks are not cleaned up until the absorbent is picked up and disposed of properly in designated containers or areas. If the spill or leak is larger, then notify the facility manager and your stormwater staff. Follow these steps for using dry methods for the cleanup of fuel spills like gas, diesel, or kerosene. Step 1. Spread absorbent, kitty litter or loose absorbents, sheets, pillows, pigs, or socks on the spill. Step 2. Sweep or pick up the absorbent materials. Step 3. Properly dispose all wastes. If you refuel at a commercial facility, then notify their staff of any spills or leaks so that they can properly clean them up. In the event of a spill or leak, you should also notify your community's stormwater staff so that they can inspect the commercial facility for any contaminated stormwater discharges. If you refuel at a government facility, in addition to the previous precautions, you should also know where the emergency shutoff valve and spill kits are located. Most communities use signage and labeling to identify the location of the emergency shutoff valve and spill kit. When using an above ground storage tank to refuel, do not leave the pumping area while filling the vehicle and do not top off the tank. Portable gas containers should only be used where it is impractical to send vehicles and equipment to a fueling center. Fueling center businesses or governmental locations are better equipped to handle fuel and spills properly. In those situations where it is impractical, a portable gas container may need to be used. When refueling a portable gas can, follow these steps. Step 1. Fuel should only be dispensed into an approved fuel container. Step 2. Fill portable fuel containers while they are sitting on the ground, ideally on an oil absorbent pattern. Step 3. Fuel slowly and carefully to minimize drips on the ground outside of the line drip pan. Step 4. Leave at least 10% of the portable gas container empty. Fuel expands when it heats up, so you need to leave space to allow this thermal expansion to happen. Place the portable gas can in a secondary containment or on a spill absorbent pad while transporting. When pouring fuel from a portable can, step one, when fueling must take place at a remote location, designate an area away from drainage courses to be used, ideally on a hard paved surface if available. Step two, Pour slowly and carefully to minimize drips. Step 3. Use a funnel. When fueling small equipment in a field like lawnmowers, small sweepers, weed whackers, blowers, portable generators, and so on, fuel over a paved or concrete area well away from any storm drains or ditches. By following the precautions described in this video, you can help with our commitment to keep the waterways clean. 
Our actions set the example for those we serve, and therefore, it takes due diligence to assure that all necessary precautions are taken, even for the tiniest amount of fuel. Even though small fuel drips may not appear to be a big problem when they happen, over time, they can accumulate to become a much bigger problem. With the number of people refueling throughout our state, our country, and the world, just imagine what would happen if there were no attempts to clean up and prevent these spills. It only takes one gallon of petroleum to contaminate one million gallons of water. Your commitment to do the right thing will help to protect our environment for generations to come.